of the show so back for 3.2 on the body yeah. as well. Sonia Barrett welcome back to Off Planet Radio and I, I I don't know what's gonna go on but I'm sure we're gonna laugh a lot which is what welcome I love to do chaos. yeah <laughs> all right well uh, thank you thank you for having me back um I assume I'm the guest so <laughs> <laughs> who the fuck knows at this point <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out who's the host <laughs> we don't need roles anymore don't you know this is yeah, this is I, I, yeah oh, throughout the identities this yeah. is the, yeah let's get, let's totally get rid of identity don't this forget is to get my role playing out. game that's huh? too funny oh my god but i guess this this game the human game is not an rpg anymore so oh it's my not god. <laughs> <laughs> we're in trouble folks we're all out of control and this is the best part though being out of control is exactly what you want to be that's how you break the code yeah yeah be yeah. out of control and we are we are not <laughs> adhering to any protocol <laughs> at this time <laughs> look at me my cord's all tangled i'm a mess <laughs> <laughs> randy's usually the stable one what happened here oh no there's no stability randy's the stable one if randy's the stable one then we're all in trouble <laughs> all right oh my but gosh see, what we just did oh. there was we started a show that's about mm -hmm. the human body with laughter, right? we kind of did a uh, pattern interrupt on the whole thing, which is I kind love of the it. point. Yeah, that's the yeah. whole point. That that's the out of control. That's that's exactly it. Too much too much being in control is makes the body rigid. Mm, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is amazing because it, it, it is. It's amazing how locked every we all are. We're not relaxed. We think we are, but even when you're sitting, you're not relaxed. Everything there's so much tension in yeah. throughout the whole body from all day just period and so yeah so when you laugh you don't you really don't have a choice but the whole body kind of laughs you know it's like the whole body just kind of loosens up so you, you really don't have a choice but to just relax and let it flow yeah so speaking of um being out of control i just want to hit this real fast before we get into the meat um so the, the last time we the last time we recorded was right before the retreat, and this is, uh, this is our first sit down back with Sonia after, and if you guys want to uh, have an out of control experience, I highly suggest you attend one of Sonia's retreats. It is not for everybody, but I, I think it, this would suit a few of you out there, and um, I loved it, and what I really liked about it was the, you know, the, the amount of laughter that went on, um, and the one of the things I found really, really refreshing was that with really very few ex exceptions, the people there were not married to narratives. And that is so, ref one of the things that happens to us when we are in this alternative media circle, especially once you become a, a sort of a personality in, in it, you become married to, you know, whether consciously or not at some point. I mean, I've pretty much let go of them mostly at this point, but, you know, you become married to narrative, intentional or not, and the people who you know, who, who are in the community also do, and then you sort of create these little groups and cults around those narratives. And one of the things for me has over the last year has been that I've been sort of letting go of all of that. And it was really, really refreshing for the first time to be um, in a group of people where that was pretty much mostly the case for everyone. And <laughs> just flow in a yeah. way where you didn't have to worry about offending somebody's worldview. And that was, I mean, that was that just that much in and of itself made it a retreat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it, it is very different. And and you're you're right. If if people need absolute structure and like this rigid um these rigid constructs, it is totally not for them. It is free flowing, yet it's deep. This deep. is the, the trippy part is that and, and the reason why it has to be that fluid is because yeah, we do get into such deep 
I think, uh, dialogue, cutting edge dialogue, that it will ha you have to have that kind of pliability to let that information kind of just kind of flow. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? If, if you're all rigid with it, you can't really get the flow. So we'll go from the most extreme thing we're talking about with science or whatever to the most ridiculous you know, <laughs> mostly ridiculous. <laughs> mostly ridiculous. <laughs> uh, yeah, and and everybody that everybody that's there, of course, you know, you get a lot of the pe same people that are have become like family. But um, and I and I knew them. I saw them. I met them before, like in the very beginning. And those people are very different people now. If you talk yes. to Angel, they're very different from several years ago when we started. And it is, it is very life changing. <laughs> yeah, no, it really was. And I found it extra. I mean, I was having difficulty accepting uh, the world in the weeks and months leading up to it. And that possibly could have even been some preamble, but I, it, I found it very difficult to reinsert myself into the matrix game. Uh, After upon, you came back. Upon, I still have almost no online presence since, since yeah. coming back just because, um, it's really great to, um, to. That's what happens disentangle. though. Disentangle. Yeah. That's, that's why we, we started to call it the retreat flu because it's so <laughs> funny because no, yeah. a lot of times, I mean, all of us, everybody's been through it. Um, every time we get together, even though there's so much laughter, but then there's so much depth that everybody comes back and they're, you know, sometimes there's a, a readjustment period or, or, uh, things start shifting in you and yeah. that's what happens. And it's like trying to, your brain is like readjusting it, to an adjustment that you don't even know the depth of the adjustment that's mm -hmm. happening. I think that's, that's what's happening with you. And I think that's, that's what we all find so cool about it. So now what I've decided to do is um, after the retreats, after each retreat, we're going to meet like uh, we're going to have like a, just a follow-up chat, you know, after yeah. uh, like maybe two, whatever, hour-long follow-up chats after each one, just because it, it's happened, it happens all the time. And some people, it took them a couple of gatherings with us for it to not be so intense after, even though there's so much laughter and craziness going on that you don't know you're changing because you're so pliable at yeah. that moment. So it, anyway, so it, it's what, fascinating. What I think the biggest changed for, for me that I noticed is that like mm, things that I thought were about other people in terms of like oh <laughs> like this person does this thing that creates this problem right. for me or or this thing that's annoying or they do, like you know this thing is this person's problem um no this is my bullshit <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah 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 it also bullshit. comes surface yeah, yeah it all just comes right up in your face and that's why when people read the testimonials online it always says this is not for the faint of heart this stuff yeah. is amazing but uh if you're not ready to let go your bull crap don't even come yeah. this might not be happening right there. and you see some people um like one lady um her pain her stuff started like the day before like for some people some things start it's mm -hmm. like the energy of this the gathering it's really wild it's the energy of this gathering that just people come in and they just readjust it's it's wild i mean even yeah you know, myself experience that so there's definitely something to the gathering of of those people and then we do it in all these way out places <laughs> these very interesting way out uh property yep. that uh is just awesome anyway it was just fun hanging out with you it was just good yeah, and this absolutely. is all part of the health thing so uh, the thing is we can't really separate it i know it sounds like we're talking about different things sometimes like we're, we're going to talk about the, the body yeah. but it's all the same stuff because it's all your stuff all the the rigidity um that that also causes the body to um to get these blockages in in diff different parts of our bodies uh whether it be you know it's the emotional stuff but things yeah. that's going on with you or things that you don't even know it's going on with you because it's buried there for such a long time um either way it all begins um from something from from a core thing and then we have to be ready to allow or to let go even if you don't know what you're letting go of it's so important that you just go, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to uh, 
to, to release what, whatever needs to be changed in me um, to move me forward. It's like you're just committing to that. You don't know exactly how it's going to happen. And the, the important thing is that you don't try to box how change is going to happen. Mm -hmm. Be because the more you try to control it, is the more tension there is and the more fighting you're doing and the, the harder everything seems and you know it just became become so difficult you have to just know just let go and you just let it like you backed away from uh, like the computer like that's what you're feeling so you didn't fight it you mm -hmm. just kind of allowed allowed it you know you didn't s struggle with it even though eh, there are times when you're thinking, you know, I really need to do whatever this thing on the computer, but then there's this feeling of no, not yet. No, not yet. You know, and, yeah. it, and it's being able to, it's being able to trust all of that. Um, but the body, the body's processing everything. Mm -hmm. It is, this machine is like working over time. Uh, and that's what people need to understand. So it's not just the food. The food is one thing, but it's the whole mind game, man. It's, it's the mind game and the game itself. Well, the, I like what you said about not boxing the experience because I think so many people go into experiences that they expect to be transformational and mm -hmm. want to feel different at the end of it. They want to go home feeling right. different. And I didn't go home feeling any different. The difference came in the days and weeks later upon reflection and it's still happening because you can't actually experience the transformation until you go back and reintegrate into your life and then you see how you're changed, how you feel different. And what right. you said about the body is very important because we all think that this thing is in our mind. The mind is so much the processor for this, but the trauma yeah. is stored in the body and the body is also where the healing will take place. Absolutely. And, and, and the mind will follow. And the other thing is, is we think about our bodies as being our tool and our instrument in this game, but actually we are the game. Our body is the game. Our mm -hmm. mind is the game. We think of it as something outside of ourselves because that is a human tendency to need to project, right. but it's all actually within us. Right, and right. So, yeah? It's a, well, yes, this is, the whole body is like, is the interface, you know, mm -hmm. um, that, that has the, uh, processes the sensation. So it's, it's this interface that gets, that processes the, um, the sensory system that um, processes the whole feeling of um, the relationship that you're having with everything, people, places, things, what you like, what you don't like, uh, you know, all, all of that, your happiness, your sadness, the idea of happiness and sadness, that, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So the body is processing everything. And, and, and that makes it super important because without it, um, no matter you say you are, we're spirit, um, what is it having, we're having a, a human, uh, human uh, humans are having a, uh, we're we're uh, eternal souls or spirits having a spirit human having experience. Human experience. Yeah. Doesn't matter because a lot of people say that's probably why I can't even remember because yeah. they people say things just they just rattle it off. They don't really hear what they're saying. <clears throat> so bottom line of it is, um, even though we'll take that level of it, I know what it is. It's it's we're not humans having a spiritual experience. We're spirits having a human experience. Having a human experience. That's it. Yeah. And and we and we need to have these vehicles these mechanisms to have this amazing experience and 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 these bodies should be appreciated more than they are um they are an afterthought in most cases and even when they're not an afterthought um it's very it's very superficial and topical thinking um mm -hmm when we think we're paying attention to the body. Okay, yeah, we like when it looks nice on the outside and um, maybe we, some people are doing trendy, eating great. But, but do we really dive into what's really happening with the body? Um, the transformation that the body will undergo when the, when the belief system, when the thinking changes, when the perception changes, that's the, that's the real magic. In the meantime, though, when we are, even when we're in our dumbed down state, in the meantime, this is why it becomes so important to feed the body, to take care of it, to nurture it, because there's, there is less of the, um, what should I say? Uh, I was, when I say higher vibration, I don't mean higher as in better, but I'm talking the frequency, that vibration. Um, it, there, there's less of that in the body there's less of that the body is actually operating at a lower frequency much lower frequency um because the consciousness is generally 
at a lower vibration. And if the consciousness is at a lower vibration, that simply means that the awareness that one has is at that level. And so the body is, is operating, you know, at, at that space. So the higher the, the, um, our awareness becomes and the more expansive our, vi our awareness becomes, which is what we're talking about when we say, you know, the raising the vibration of our consciousness, mm -hmm. the more of that kind of charge will serve to really charge the body, to really keep the body charged up. It becomes more of that than even the food. But right now, that is not the story of um, of most, you know, most, we're all still dealing with it, but it's not the story of most people. We are very tied into the construct of this game, of the matrix, of the very, very third dimensional uh, experiences. Everything is external and we are just really tapping into or really learning how to harness um, that more expansive awareness, that vi the vibration that is um, a more expansive awareness. Bringing that in, that starts to help the body to operate at a, at a higher frequency. And that's why the belief systems and programs, it becomes very necessary um, for them to move, leave. Like what you're talking about, the very, those little changes, you come back and we experience all these little changes. That's the body lightening up more. That, that's the frequency of the body changing ever so you know, slight, not, not necessarily slightly, but it's this gradual changing that's happening, which is going to continue to take you, the body, into a healthier space mm. because it's less weighed down with trauma, with the frequency of trauma, which is, um, which is a, a, going to be a, a lower frequency. It's a, it's a dense frequency, um, like, like, like literal knots in the body, uh, mm. locking the body up. But the lighter, the, the more of those things that, um, are released, the lighter the body becomes because of yeah. the consciousness. I, I, I very much agree. I mean, there's been many, many times in my life where like I did the eating super healthy to try and, you know, make the body look great or to lose weight or the trendy thing, like you said. And like, you might get that a little bit, but it often, especially what some of those diets did was short lived. Actually, short lived, they make you tired, which ultimately makes you more dense. And so you're skinny, but your face looks tired and your eyes look tired and you feel like shit. And your consciousness is this big because all you're thinking about is, you know, your calories. How crappy you look. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so what's in, you know, and it, a lot of these mindsets are about, you know, be, you know, knowing that like, okay, I have to look good while I can because we're on a linear time frame here and I'm getting older and I only have so many more years to like, you know, have that in itself years. ages you. That totally. in itself takes you down. Completely. And one yeah. of the things that I've noticed is over the last couple of years, I've had a huge transformation in my body. And mm -hmm. um, yes, I'm, I'm doing great things with, you know, what, what I'm eating and exercise and stuff like that. But I, I've been athletic most of my life. I was always doing mm -hmm. that. But I stopped believing that I'm going to die at a right. some prescribed stage. And so, okay, if I'm not, if I don't have a time limit on myself, well, then I want to take care of this because if this is going to be around for a while, then, you know, I don't want to be around for a while in some disgusting old set. It's all decrepit and right. yeah, yeah. And I started to believe that like, well, there's no reason I can't be in as good of shape now as I was when I was doing gymnastics. And as yeah. soon as I bought that belief system that I, that I could, could be my best body now and mm -hmm. whenever I want and forever, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, and, and I could do anything, you know. I'm, without being stupid, I could do anything that I was able to do before. It's still in mm -hmm. me. I can do that now. Mm -hmm. And things have started to really, really transform in a way that is almost unbelievable to yeah. me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and that's one of the things that, that, that you sort of, um, you sort of resonate out so well. And one of the things that, you know, that is, I found so interesting about you and, and it is interesting when that begins to happen. I do think the key is letting go of that death piece. Oh Letting my go gosh. of the death piece and not yeah. feeling like, you know, age you have an expiration stuff. date. Yeah. And it, that, that's the stress. I mean, it, the, you actually run towards it. I, I try yes. to tell people that, you know, it's like you fear it so much that you're, you're like running from it, but you're running towards it. And that's why I'm always like, what if you, what if you were to just be? Even mm -hmm. it, and, and it's not about me going, um, well, you want to be immortal, I'm just saying, what if you just be? Because even, even saying, 
um, you want to be immortal. And I, I mean, I used to use that word, but I don't use it anymore. That even locks you into a construct. What if you're just are? Yep. That's it. No Just, limit. No, no attachment to yeah, no yeah. time. Immortality means you're still thinking of time. Yep. And, uh, and if we just live and be, that to me was just, is just profound um, to just operate that way. And to feel, to feel yourself in a, when I say a youthful state, but just to feel your, to anchor yourself there as opposed to anchoring yourself in uh, the prescribed, the prescription of what you're supposed to be at a certain age uh, and buying into that. That's completely different. But if you just start, like I feel, I, I move about and I, I mean, yeah, I feel no different than what we would consider um, the 18 or 19 to be in the sense of, yeah. Doing, you know, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm feeling life. That's yeah. what I'm feeling. I'm ju I'm feeling life. I'm feeling alive. I am loving it. That's the other important part. Mm -hmm. Do you love life? Do you love being uh, what we call alive? I think even that's going to change too. There's some things that I have seen for sure that people are going to go, what? But I do see that. And, and I will say this since, since this came up. One of the things that I am seeing is that uh, for sure, there will be a time where the idea of death is going to be a primitive concept. Mm -hmm. We are heading there. There's no doubt. Yeah. yeah. We, we are heading there. And we, we, can see, we can see that because we can see um, if we were to look at the origins of life. Uh, we, nobody really knows exactly because life is emerging from an infinite place that is immeasurable. We can talk about subatomic particles, but there is a point that goes beyond the, even that. Any any concept that we can have that that is immeasurable. It's like it's like breaking breaking into a grain of sand till you can't see anything, but this, but it doesn't mean that there's nothing there. Um, so there's this immeasurable field from which everything has emerged. And I'm just talking about right now, let's just talk about the planet itself, the earth and the life forms that have, that have formed on here. Okay. Now let's just go to human beings. Um, from which point did we emerge in this space and gradually just, looking at what we know of history or millions of years and human beings and the different stages of what, what we call evolution. And I'm not necessarily talking about Darwinian evolution, but progression. Let's look at progression. Let's use that word. Um, it's like that which had no form has gradually through different stages emerged into this body and it will only continue to move forward into infinite magnificence people have mm -hmm. a programming of this body death mm -hmm. but when you look at creation it just continues to blossom and that's what that's what's supposed to happen here this is like a flower that has to continue to bloom into unlimited uh, potentials of what it can be in, in unlimited to a point of um, moving about. Yes. into different spaces and the different realms on a conscious level. Cause if we are doing that anyway, but we're talking on a conscious level, just moving through and, and, and being able to uh, shift and change uh, the molecules shape shift basically, you know, into whatever. And, and, and it's for people to wake up now. Cause let me say this. We're in, well, I'll say we're in a time based on just the default system itself. It is clear that there is default expansion going on, right? There's a default expansion. What we're talking about is our, our free expansion and not waiting for the default program. Self-directed expansion. It, exactly. But so even in the default expansion, we can see that it is a time where um, this life, this reality as we know it, is is moving forward technology we can see it in technology i, I That's like the the idea, i like the idea of generating you know generating self-propelled multiple fractal realities that you can choose between and move back and forth amongst absolutely and yeah. and, and again it's 
consciously doing it because we are mm -hmm. we're doing everything we think we want to do we just don't know because again our consciousness is very wherever we lock our consciousness in that that is the reality that we um i think usually it's singular it's, usually it's a story that's that's been you know the, the other thing in, including letting go of death program the death program or this idea of what we think you know whatever like we have all of these interesting stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves and about everything else mm -hmm. and like letting learning to let go of them or really realizing that that's just one possible version of reality amongst uh, absolutely remember is also another way that you can sort of you can free yourself uh, age yourself and free yeah, yourself. You, yeah exactly yeah. you you on age yourself because your body doesn't have to conform to this program this this comfortable safe program singular perception of reality uh this singular birth to death program that uh has been you know basically encoded in everything and in, in in people's minds and and dna and so on and so yeah that's really important what you just said um is is moving away from locking ourselves in the stories because this is this is all this life is about is a bunch of stories <laughs> and and it's, it's it it's just story after story and you know one story births 12 stories or a million mm -hmm. stories and, and it's crazy how yeah. how it's really crazy what you can do what your mind can do you get some funny idea in your head and mm -hmm. you create this whole reality that is completely untrue in your head yep. but if you yep. don't stop yourself from doing it you will make it true yeah exactly <laughs> that is true uh, absolutely <laughs> because everything everything really has to take um is taking orders from you uh, and another thing i like to point out to um to people is that you're creating you're always creating laws in your reality i, well, I can't say, you do had that. an article this week yeah 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 i mean the the idea of a law and for some people when they heard that they're like oh my god that hit me he i said, so get what i'm doing said right when now. belief becomes law right when you know? belief becomes law yeah, yeah. that's it yeah and yeah. and you, you get so many people that will you know email me or people in the past that will say you know i don't know why no matter what i do this you know this doesn't happen for me no matter what i do so i'm always fascinated by that because i say to them do you hear what you said you said no matter what you do this can't happen for you right that is a law so yes yeah. n n so this other thing can't happen for you because the law in your reality is no matter what you will do this will not happen and in, yeah. in that moment they're like oh my god i did not it's notice certain, that's what i was it's doing a certain kind of logic it's, it's, tricky. A kind of, it's a certain kind of symbolic logic that the brain responds to if this then that that's the rule you know in in, in logic they call it uh it's like an equation ergo propter hoc if this then definitely yeah. that. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah. and that's what it does and, i mean because its job is to take its cue from uh from from you from the thoughts that are being generated and uh and 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 brought through through the um the spinal fluid i mean you know from the brain mm -hmm. right through to the spinal fluid and and bathing everything so that's its job you know it comes in as light frequency the the, the thoughts and that's all it does it's not that anybody's controlling you per se this is the tricky mm -hmm. part not that anybody's mm -hmm. controlling you per se but it, it, because the great the game is criminal as i like to say mm -hmm. you're like in a way it's a setup because you don't know that somehow you're caging yourself and when you're caging yourself through your stories and your beliefs the the you you um bring yourself into uh environments that will continue to support uh, mm -hmm. a particular belief uh, you, or understanding do you know who crow is crow triple seven no so he's an interesting guy we've had him on the show he's the guy who who filmed the um oh what is the lunar wave right mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. he also has just a lot of interesting ideas about things and i don't agree with him on everything but i like right. the way he thinks about a lot of things even when i disagree with some things i agree right. and he has a great quote and i think it's one of the best and it's my favorite one of mm -hmm. my favorites it's certainly of his mm -hmm. and it's belief is the enemy of knowing right because when you believe something oh okay you yourself I, I, off I've heard that. ever mm -hmm. being able to actually know mm -hmm. anything right because you've decided this right. i believe this therefore anything that is outside right. of that whether it be not <laughs> the greatest knowledge in the world mm -hmm. 
it doesn't allow for that. And right. when I'm listening to you talk right now about belief becomes law, it's kind of like the same thing that we're fighting here with, our, and you know this from right. the past, our legal system is keeping people from believing they can ever actually know anything. Right, right. They can't know. They have to right. believe they can't know. Yeah, you can't know, you can't know. I mean, and even, even, even the thought of the people that, I know there are people that are very, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, drowning in the, in the conspiracy, in the conspiracy right. um, arena. And mm -hmm. I get it, because I was there with that understanding. But even then, those people are really stabilizing these laws because they mm -hmm. have to continue to believe that either there is no other way or they have to um, fight their way out or all, all of those beliefs. And so it has mm -hmm. to continue to be reinforced. It's like praying for peace. Well, you, you got, in order to do that, you have to have war. So your praying yeah. for peace is actually ensuring that there is war. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's really well, when you look at it. So you step back and you realize the need for being neutral, the need for um, stepping away so much from the judgment of that's right, that's wrong, that's good, that's bad, that's black, that's white, that's positive, yeah. that's negative. Um, and, and, and I know there are people that's going, well, how can we do that? That the world would be in chaos. I'm like, the world's in chaos. The world is in chaos. <laughs> <laughs> we're not in any danger of anything becoming more chaotic so let's experiment with this other kind these other kinds of freedom and i do believe that sometimes when people free themselves spontaneous order comes about right absolutely because yeah. most of most of uh the things that we are um running away from but actually running towards it's really about survival and and it's like it's so important for that people realize that that much of their life is um is is based on survival and so a lot of things are being generated in mm -hmm. your thought process and uh so on based on uh your need to survive that's really doing it so the more that we understand this and you think about it the more that we get this and it's that aha moment and you realize it's okay it's okay you yourself are not having to be in jeopardy anymore of oh, I have to defend myself. I have mm -hmm. to survive. So therefore, if I have to survive, I have to judge you. I have to worry about what's good, what's bad. I have to worry about if I'm going to be a good person. All that goes away. It just yeah. goes away because you're not having to defend yourself anymore. You're not having to be on guard for who's saying what about you and who's going to do what to you. And that, that literally removes you from the game. Because yeah. now we, we're talking about energetically here. We're talking about mm -hmm. the, the uh, like, for lack of a better word, like, like attracts like. Um, so, yeah, you're, you're not having to have that thought process that opens this field that invites, mm -hmm. you know, a, the, a yep. field, a resonating field yep. that you now get to play in you know, and be caught up in, and then 200 mm -hmm. stories later, you're <laughs> spun off into a whole bunch of other, other things. Now, there are people, they don't know that they're enjoying this, right? They don't know, mm -hmm. but you, they are enjoying this because now they get together with, with other people and they get to talk about the, the horrors of whatever it is or the system, or you, you, get, to, you get to do this thing together. That, there is some joy in that. It's like people, who, I always say, who like to get together and talk about their surgeries. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? For sure. Or, or yeah. share, it's like people who get together and share their war stories, like vets who get together and share their war stories, or people who have, you know, exactly and get together and talk about how obnoxious their two-year-old is and how annoying their husband is and how much they don't help and whatever and all that stuff. Exactly. Just that's just, that, that will continue. Right. Yeah. And that's this human nature. Now, now, hear what we're saying? Now, let's just get people to realize this. We're not saying that's good or bad either. We're right. just, this is an observation. We are yeah. observing the manner in which we as humans operate. So this isn't like a judgment on anybody. Oh, We've yeah. all operated from that and space. And if, if you enjoy it, go ahead then, and enjoy they it. Go ahead and enjoy it. But, you, you know, but then you know, people generally, I didn't know I was enjoying some of my misery. I didn't. Yeah. To my oh. surprise, I was like, 
whoa. My dad, my dad fucking loves watching CNN, dude. My dad has that shit on all day long. It's bad news all day, and he's upset about this and upset about that, but he sure does love watching CNN all day long, you know? Yeah, but what would he do if he wasn't watching that? See, this, yeah. is, the, this is the key. Yep. It's like if we weren't complaining mm -hmm. about certain things in our life, our life, or our mates, or whatever, we weren't complaining. That's what I say in workshops. What would you do if that thing that you say was is not happening for you? What would happen if if it were to work out and happen? It's amazing how people really have no idea. They like to say, you know, gosh, it's like they like to dream. Oh yeah, if you know, if only if only I had a million dollars. I love that one. If only I had a million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, you know, oh, life would be so much better. I would, you know, be able to do so many things. They have no idea what they're talking about, really, right? Yeah. So, um, so you step back, and if somebody handed them a million dollars right now, it'd be gone in a short while, because they, yeah. they they have no no reference point for for handling it, and they'd go, guess what? They'd boomerang right back, which is what happens to most people who win the lottery. They they yeah. go right back because that's their reference point. That's the program in their brain is lack. That's it's, what they know. It's also like when, let's say it's your mate or your boss or whatever, right, who always does this thing that drives you nuts, right? Well, part of the reason they're doing it is because you need them to keep doing it. Because yeah. what you have to face in yourself when they stop, when they stop doing that and you're yeah. still somehow as uncomfortable in yourself as you were, were when you were blaming your discomfort on the fact that they were doing something, that shit is, that's, the, that's some of the shit that I've been dealing with since you back to the retreat, right? You will do anything to make them start doing that shit again. Yeah. You don't have to deal with yourself. So that, I mean, it is your distraction, it is your distraction, yeah. distraction. And it, there is nothing like just being with yourself. It mm -hmm. is a trip when you're just with yourself. Um, yeah. And I tell, I tell anybody, you know what? Mm, if you ever have a chance to go do a 10 day silent retreat, go do Be that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing like hanging with yourself. Um, because everything comes up, uh, everything that you don't want to know about yourself. And it is amazing how we'll find things to distract ourselves when we are by ourselves. Even if we say, you know what, I'm going to stay in the house for seven days. I'm not going to talk to anybody. I'm just going to be in silence. Oh, no, that's not going to happen. We will find stuff to distract ourselves in, mm -hmm. in the house. That's almost things, what we do. Things you normally don't like doing will suddenly become fascinating to keep you from being with yourself. <laughs> right? Like suddenly you'll be folding the laundry you and doing the dishes. Folding the laundry stuff you hate. The dishes <laughs> mopping the floor because it really looks bad. And you got, wait yeah. a minute, wait a minute, here's the best part. Got to mop the floor because the energy has to be just right now that you're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Speaking of silent retreats, Randy, welcome back to Off Planet Radio. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh! Randy uh, went out of town like for a, a wallflower minute. at my own homecoming. <laughs> <laughs> what do I have to add? Really, it's it's brilliant. Um, you know, one of the things that you point out in the um, in the film business of disease is the fact that health and disease are both frequencies, mm -hmm. and you know, I like to think that what you guys just did here for, you know, the last 40 minutes or so is kind of raised the frequency by having fun with it, kicking it around, kicking its ass, which is really kind of where this all has to go anyway. If we're going to prevail over disease and prevail over the system that is allegedly killing us, we're actually killing ourselves. This is systemic suicide. Right. Well, the um, system is supporting the consciousness mm -hmm, of mm -hmm. the people. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's meeting the demand. But the I think is, is, <laughs> it is supply and demand. Mm -hmm. It is meeting the demand. The consciousness is being controlled by a small minority of people. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how, this is actually how we do win. We don't need all that many people. We simply need enough people to raise the vibration level to offset what the so-called oligarchs have, quote, been doing to us. Right. Ooh. Right. It's to the game. They do it yeah, to, yeah. and that's the thing, they do it to the game. And um, 
Oh, that's such an interest. We could talk about that one all day long. But uh, yeah, when you look at the game, it's the construct of the game and then the characters that are participating in the game, um, what, what appears to be what we call human beings. And, uh, and a great majority of, of, of people are really more, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, NPCs, non-player characters. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're um, what do you call it for movies? Extras. Extras. Yeah. You know, um, background. Background. Yeah. 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 There, there, yeah. There's a lot of that. And, um, and, I, and so I think it's fascinating. But the, but the game itself, and I think this is the beauty. When, when I looked at this, this was the beauty for me, is realizing that the game does have to be what it is. It has to be what it is. And if it wasn't what it was, you, the whole idea of being here and discovering and taking that journey, because, you know, it's all about the journey. It's not the destination, but it's the whole process, the whole journey, the journey of who done it. You know, this mystery theater uh, sort of experience we're having with figuring our way back out and discovering who we are, that ultimately we are somehow at the apex or the center of all of what we think is being done to us. Of course, we're at the center on a much different level, not down here. But this is to realize that the game has to be what it is. If the game wasn't what it was uh, and, and has been in all its glory, uh, would the human experience be complete? We would have, we would have a, a, a one-sided human experience. We would have a human experience that's limited to some specific things. And this human experience has not been limited to specific things. It's been everything. It's been everything that we would consider to be horrific and wonderful. It has been the extreme of any kind of madness to the incredible beauty. Um, and in that, human beings have the opportunity to go, oh, shoot, I woke up in the game. Oh, okay. Whew. All right, so that means I have to now transcend the game. I'm not fighting to get out the game, but the object of this game is to penetrate the game, just to walk through this game to the other side. For the game to become so insignificant that you move through it with ease. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the magic of, of this experience. So without it being what it's been, it would be very easy and simple and you just, we just wouldn't have all that. And, it, and I know people go, well, why? Well, why? Well, why? And if you really we start looking at it, you will see. It's like you really get it. You go, okay. Because there's such beauty in us, in this conversation, in all that we've, we've figured out, the things that we've lived in our lives, you know, from, from you know, being part of religion in this life, go, going to church, doing this, doing that, and then gradually Wake, awakening to memory, to, to these, you know, bigger and bigger levels of memory and realization of, of who we are and seeing our way through this game. Think about it this way. Why do we like spectator sports so much? Mm -hmm. and more importantly, why do the players in the game like <laughs> spectator sports? Right. Because mm -hmm. to them, a, a stadium full of 75, 80,000 people it's mm -hmm. an abstraction. You don't mm -hmm. know every person there, nor do right. you care. You owe right. it to the mass effect of the energetic that is going around in a circle, literally. That's Absolutely. The stadium. Yeah. That's why, supposedly, the whole world is around. Everything mm -hmm. spins around me. Mm -hmm. When we're able to swap in and out of that construct, mm -hmm. we're, we're players in the game. We're spectators mm -hmm. in the game. That's right. And then we feel the energy in the game. But at the same time, we're going, it's a game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's, 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 I love the symbology of uh, how e everything actually is a, is a copy of everything else. We just mm -hmm. don't always realize that. But everything is operating like off of the same formula. Uh, through and through the corporate game, same thing. You know, it, it's it, the political game, religion, government. Thing. Yeah, 
yeah, it's it's all it's all this the same thing, but it's also these these hierarchical systems. There's up there, there's down here. There's the 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 players that are here. There are the players that are down here, and each one needs the other. You can't be up here if there's nobody down here. If there isn't a down here, you can't have an up there. You yeah. know, and vice versa. So we see the interchange in the human game and the necessity of the character, the roles, the different roles that people play. It's we we need like them to play those roles. That same hierarchy even sort of exists within our own body, within the chakra system and like the, you know, lower part of the body in comparison mm -hmm. to the head. We think of mm -hmm. the head as being superior to the rest of the body, that this is where our brain is. This is where right. like how our consciousness is attached to and our knowledge. And we think of base behaviors as being generated from the lower chakras and the higher, you know, actually, the, human you know the, the ones actually, up above. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, that's true. We, we, actually know, we actually know now that we're playing the brain up here, but actually the brain is down here in the gut in the too. Gut. In the gut. There's yeah. two brains. Mm -hmm. We've ignored yeah. the gut brain. Mm -hmm. We've elevated the monkey mind. So we're thinking through here when we need mm -hmm. to get down here, mm -hmm. there has to be a balancing, a, a redistribution of, of energy, which is something I'm working with right now. Right, to right. To get better. And a holistic, Ooh. yeah, and yeah. a holistic yeah. appreciation for the entire universe, this whole universe. The whole body, the whole body and the whole, whole body. Yeah. yeah, it's this appreciation. And I also we love are the universe. That's the whole thing. Yeah, that's I mean, the whole thing. Is, Emily and I have said this for years. You know, mm -hmm. the, the truth is out there, it's inside you. And people go, oh, that's so clever. And it's going, no, it's not clever no. at all. Yeah, you are the universe. Yeah. 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 You are. Yeah. And every cell is also, and, and, what, what yeah. is a universe onto itself. And I think that's, that's so magnificent because it's no different than we think that, you know, the earth and the planets and the universe. And then in these bodies, we have, you know, a kidney or heart. We have, we have all of these organs that are also a universe onto themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, mm -hmm. th then every cell in everything is also a universe onto itself. So it's, it's interesting to watch this, um, this, this sort of a matrix and a matrix and a matrix. Mm -hmm. Russian that. nesting dolls. That's Russian right. Yeah. The same formula, we see it runs through everything. It is on and on and on. And I did an interview recently um, uh, with uh, Ananda um, Bosman, and um, it, it, just talking about that, and, and I love that when he, when he was talking about the, you know, some of the scientific discoveries and realizing that uh, it, it it's there 512 dimensions of course there's more dimensions but we're talking 512 dimensions it takes for a human being to actually show up in 3d and and when, what i find so fascinating is because yes it aligned very much with what what i was seeing with with in my work with everything not just a human being but everything everything exists in 3d as we see it just because that's how we need to see it but what people don't realize is that the very rock, everything exists in these multiple layers. And in those multiple realms of existence, there's a different form. And, and that's what basically was saying. And these, these, you figure five, 512 dimensions, you look at that, it's sort of like the staircase or from mm, subatomic realm to some degree making your way and down to visible, to, to visible light, you know, and that's what it is. You're coming down the spectrum it, it, ultimately till you hit visible light. And then here we are in, in, in this field, in this uh, Hertz field and you show up. Guess what? He <coughs> says it, it takes 512 dimensions for us to show up for just, what is it? 60 seconds. Wow. Yeah, for just for us to show up for just 60 seconds, that's a process. And yet, and we're not static. So we're appearing and disappearing all the time. Mm -hmm. But look at this beautiful illusion, though. That's kind of cool, like Cliff High's. Uh, yeah, a little blue theory. About, yeah. Yeah, the phasing. But just hanging on to that. Yeah, be, being able to, to hang on to this idea of time, these moments that we create this thing that we call time. Yet it's immeasurable. It's happening in 
in a flash. I, Randy and I discussed this all the time. We fully believe that we are generators of time. Yes. We are the yeah. ones yeah. generating. You're right. Yeah. We're t- we're we are. Generating. We are the field. We're yeah. We are the lords of time, and we are mm-hmm. generating it. And, and, and that with it. Because what we, we need it. Because we need it. And what we've mm-hmm. been talking about here about, you know, a fixed time or a linear time or a death point or whatever. No, we're generating it. We can generate we as generating much or as long it. and in any direction that we want. In we don't have to direction. just generate. Yeah, absolutely. And that I'm glad you said that too, because I, those are the conversations that we need to have. I mean, you know I me, mean? I get so excited about this conversation, this kind of conversation. You know I mean, it's just like, I'm telling you, it's just like eating ice cream. I'm like, I'm like, yes, yes. Because the more we, the more we start to cement these truths, the, these realizations, rather, the more our brain starts to change the pattern um, that that we've all been holding of this this third dimensional reality. And the brain is like, okay, filter keeps removing the filter, and it and 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 it keeps changing the pattern that we've been living by. You know, the blueprint because it, it the brain has a it has a blueprint that's based on the blueprint that we create. And it just keeps looking for that because it looks for patterns, right? So it keeps looking for that. So the more aware or the more we remember, I also like mm-hmm. to say, the more we remember of, of, of what we are, of the infiniteness or the magnitude at which we, um, we are, is the more all of that changes, is the more the brain changes and the pattern, the, the, our norm starts to change. What, <laughs> what used to be our old norm, it goes away and, and a new normal starts to be there isn't that what expanding your awareness or expansion is all about is that's it more and more and more and more absolutely are because that's it like you are the universe the universe is you and the more you allow yourself to remember yourself the more that you can be absolutely and that's what when when people talk about um ascension that's why i'm always like you're ascending into yourself yeah you're you're really just ascending into yourself and you're right you're ascending into uh memories of 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 potentials uh who you are is of course the fabric of all but because it's the journey it's the journey it's the journey that we are enjoying um of of remembering in in different pieces you get to be right now we get to have this conversation it's beautiful but if we had jumped past this and now we are boom we're like light years away light years ahead we couldn't get to capture this moment and we are light years away too but right now we managed to capture and stabilize um what seemed to be this moment so that we can you know, be having this experience. And I, and I, I get very excited about it. that in itself will make you young, make you look younger. Yeah. These kinds of conversations. I have seen that with myself. When, when I, you I look remember, 10 years younger than when we started, you were already 28. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, you know, I have seen myself do that when I was on my quest on my own for 10 years at 10 years of just me not, you know, discovering and, and, and taking this journey on my own. And that's all I, I mean, day and night, day and night, I was, I was just at it. And I remember when I started, when I started moving away by this time, this was like 1992, uh, did 10 years. And then eventually I make my way to 2007 with the book. What I found, what I started to realize is that the more that I was, um, uh, immer- immersed in 3D, like I was having to start, you know, to book myself and do all that. And I was getting more 3D than I normally do. I could feel a difference. I could see it. But when I am just so immersed, when I was just so immersed in all I did was just capture information, write it down, stay in that space, I could see a difference. But then it can change in a moment. When I come in, when I realized, I was like, oh, you're too immersed right now in 3D. Because it nothing drains, that will age, it pulls. There's it nothing drains. that ages you faster than when you find the pedophilia stuff, right? When oh, you find, God. When you, when you find the information on all that kind of stuff, I mean, yeah. and if you're an inquisitive person, you'll get there and you have to go there and you have to go through it. But there is nothing that ages you more internally or externally than finding that information and then you have, I mean, then the task is to find a way to go, you know what, 
I know that this is a reality and it's, it's a horrible thing. And when I have the chance to make little things to make changes that way, I will, but I have to pull myself you out. To, of you this. have to pull yourself out. Yep. It, it, it's, it's, it's this uh, vortex. Yep. Um, the energy of that mm -hmm. just kind of, it just pulls you in. So yeah, there's some things like I, I couldn't even, I just have to go, okay, I, I, I can't even go in on that. Yeah. Um, and of course, there's all kinds of other things around that whole thing. Yeah. There's, oh, there's so many, so many things, understandings around um, certain behaviors, mm -hmm. uh, certain experiences. Um, a baby is a being, uh, a mm -hmm. being that is having this experience. Um, you know, and it's a tough thing to, to look at on some of, some of these things. So, yeah. So that's when we have to be able to step back. And we know, and we have, in a way, you don't have anything attached to it one way or another. I know when I heard about, and I'm not going to get into this stuff, but I know when I, when I heard about all those children um, that were separated from their parents, mm -hmm. as a mother, I, I'm like, when my husband had it on the TV, I, I'm like, I, I, can't, I can't even hear that. Yeah. I, I cannot even hear that because I, yeah, in that moment, I couldn't even imagine somebody separating me from my babies when my kids were little. Well, yeah. to separate well me this from was a tactic kids. that was basically yeah. stolen right out of the pages of the Third Reich. Yeah, you're not, this is you're exactly not lying. what they did when they took people into concentration camps. They mm -hmm. separated them, they stamped them, they numbered, they put them in small containers and basically stopped allowing them to be human. Yeah, yeah. There have been movies on that. Mm -hmm. There's a movie that I just watched called um, What Happened to Monday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, yeah, yeah. They're all yeah. There's seven twins and uh, seven, 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 yes. seven yeah. of them. Yeah, and they all pretend they're one. Yeah. They're all pretend. They had to because, once again, all these movies with children. I mean, to, to veer off on that, but yeah, no. it, just, it just reminded me of that because we've had so many films coming up, The Giver. Um, um, what is it? The, the Darkest Mind, um, uh, Maze Runner. Uh, there's there's a, a lot of these movies that have to do with children. And generally, there's, a, there's some sort of fear of the children, whether it be in powers that they're coming with or something. And we got to get, we got to, you know. Limit well, that's because yeah. they're close to the source. Uh-huh. 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 That's the Matrix yeah. said. We don't try to change a mind that's why they don't try to change a mind after 25 um it's what the children represent but the fact that that in this case with the with all these these seven they wanted a time where no no siblings you know it could mm -hmm. be one child and you're trying to hide your children and even though we're saying these are movies you know like handmade and stuff like that the fact is that we as human beings are coming up with these scripts you can only tell your own story. Yeah. We're coming yeah. up with these scripts and, and we're living this life. There's versions of that. If it's not, it might not be happening necessarily here, but somewhere some of that madness is probably going on. But the fact is human beings are coming up with these stories and it's coming from somewhere. Yep. I, well, I, I, yeah. Go ahead, Randy. Did you want to say something or I just wanted to? No, that this is the last round. We hit the hour. Yeah. I just wanted to circle back to something you said before we kind of went off on that tangent and that you said that we were ascending into ourself, right? right. That that's, that's what ascension should be. And people have this idea that, you know, the system likes to propel that ascension is about leaving yourself, about leaving this place, about leaving your body. It's, yeah, getting away, running, right? so getting away. Just like everything the new else. Earth. The new just earth. like, right, the new earth. Just like everything else, it's the opposite of what they say. And it is ascending into yourself. And um, the body is really important in that. And yeah. once again, <laughs> we talked about something totally else that we planned to talk about. And it was awesome. Was but I was going to ask roll over into the patron's hour, we will talk about a little bit about the fact that because you're ascending into yourself, this is really important, guys. So, What, what did Randy say he was going to ask? Sorry, Randy. Go ahead. Never mind. Doesn't no, matter. No, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, you sure? Yeah. That's, oh, that's Randy, Randy, ha well, Randy has yeah. questions. We're going to answer some of them. Randy has already no, ascended. No, no, I'm good. Himself. I'm good. Um, <laughs> no, we can as, as a generator of time, I'm not going to generate the time to go over and uh, talk <laughs> to our, our, our people who 
who help us to sustain. Sonia, Sonia can you tell, tell people, you, Sonia, tell people where they can find you, your events coming up, anything else you want people to know going out? Um, the real Sonia Barrett.com. And I don't know by the time this, this airs, this will already it's not happen. But be that long. <laughs> well, I don't know. I have, I'm doing a, a 30 day, um, workshop called, um, what the heck is it called again? <laughs> the reprogramming <laughs> experiment. It's a reprogramming experiment. Um, and, and it's, it's going to be fascinating and, and it's, everybody's is really going to have that opportunity to do so a lot of what we've been talking about today. How do you do that? How do you really experiment with yourself, um, to reprogram anyway? So it's on the website, the real And hopefully people have a chance to be able to be part of that, uh, 30 day. And what else am I doing? Uh, I don't know. And whatever it is, it's on the, it's on the website, the real Sonia Barrett.com YouTube videos. And, Oh, I'm going to be, that's right. I'm going to be at, uh, uh, in New Mexico at the human origins conference. And then I'm going to be in Sedona on the, at the end of the month, I think the 27th, at uh, the Transformation Conference. But it's all on my website. Cool. Excellent. All right, okay. we'll see you on the other side, guys.